Hello cave dwellers! Recently we took a look at the Waveshare 3.5 inch monitor for the Raspberry Pi and if you haven't seen that review click on the link here or check the description of this video to uh, have a little look at it because while we were impressed we did run into some problems namely the frame rate which is an important factor considering I want to use it for a retro pie conversion uh, to go into a Game Gear case. So frame rate is everything. Out of the box we found the uh, 3.5 inch wave share looked like this with Sonic and then with some optimization we got it to run like this. It was an improvement but it wasn't good enough and the conclusion we came to was that the problem was resolution. If we can lower the amount of pixels that need to be displayed through the GPIO port hopefully we can get a better frame rate and we're going to test that theory today with the Waveshare 3.2 inch monitor. Here it is in a box with the same familiar packaging uh, and contents as the 3.5 inch version. And let's not forget this is also a capacitive touch screen. The quick start guide is the same as the 3.5 inch model offering a pre-configured Linux image or uh, the drivers which you can install manually yourself. Further configuration is required to make this screen mirror the HDMI output and not act as a secondary monitor and I'll also include some links in the description of the video which will help you to configure it in this way. Here then is the 3.2 inch screen from its packaging. The resolution is 320 by 240 pixels compared to the 480 by 320 pixels of the 3.5 inch model. It also has the addition of these three buttons to the side of the screen which can be configured well, for whatever purpose you want. The rear of both screens is shown here now and a side by side comparison shows that the dimensions are virtually identical meaning the 3.2 has the same snug fit as the 3.5 did, fitting securely onto the Pi and with no danger of it falling off. Additional support can be added using a, a small brass post and screws included in the package. Screen to screen you can see just how similar they are in size. So let's go ahead and install it and as you can see once it's fitted to the Pi it doesn't obscure any of the ports uh, it also still gives you access to the few remaining GPIO pins and there's enough of a gap to allow heat to dissipate beneath the screen in fact I've had this thing running in a Game Gear case for a good two to three hours without any uh, any heat problems okay let's get on to the fun bit then testing is essentially going to be a side-by-side -side comparison with the 3.5 inch model so we'll switch between the two and see if there's any improvement. Let's get cracking. Naturally the first test game has to be Sonic the Hedgehog, of course it does. Let's look then at the intro screen to Sonic on the 3.5 inch model. Looking at the scrolling and the water effects in particular, you can pick up on that uh, poor frame rate. Compare it now to the 3.2 inch screen and hopefully you can see the improvement. Greater improvements within the game are to be seen however. On the 3.5 inch model here you can see that choppy frame rate, but switch to the 3.2 and everything changes. The scrolling is super smooth in comparison. And it's no surprise, the difference between 320x240 and 480x320 is exactly double the number of pixels and therefore double the amount of data. But we're still at higher or the same resolution as the original games, so no quality is lost. Let's take one last look at Sonic in Marble Zone on the 3.2 screen and then we'll move on to our next game. Although by this point, I'm already sold on this 3.2. Another fast moving game then is Outrun. And on the 3.5 inch screen here, it just doesn't quite cut it. This is not how Sega's AM2 division envisioned this game running when they created it. Although admittedly it's still better than some of those 8-bit conversions. Anyway, let's check it out on the 3.2 inch screen. Just like with Sonic, the difference is immediately noticeable. Much higher frame rates, much smoother scrolling, and everything feels tight and responsive when I use the gamepad. There's none of the delay and disconnect that I felt with the 3.5 inch screen. I should also point out that any discoloration or banding that you're seeing on this image um, is not present on the real thing, it's just the way my camera is picking up the images. Anyway, let's see some more Outrun for comparison. More observant viewers might also pick out the difference between the speed at which the car flipping animation runs on the two screens. It's not a bad conversion this actually on the Mega Drive and if you've got any requests for games that you'd like to see running on the 3.2 let me know and if I get enough requests I could put a quick compilation up to see if your favourite game runs well on the screen. 
A couple of other neat features on this screen then are that the dimensions are 4 by 3 so pixels in those old games will remain in proportion and the viewing angle is not bad at all making them just fine for handheld style gaming console conversions. And for the Game Gear in particular the screen size is the perfect fit for the aperture in the existing case so I now have a screen for my Game Gear. I've also adapted the Game Gear soundboard to work with the Raspberry Pi and you can find out more about that in my other videos. As always I hope you found this video useful, if you have give it a thumbs up and uh, why not subscribe and join me for more videos like this in future. Oh and leave a comment as well, it's always great to hear from you all. Take care cave dwellers, see you again soon. Game